Greetings everyone. We are currently studying the white paper on international migration as presented by the South African Minister of Home Affairs, Dr. Aaron Mtswaledi. Uh, the South African white paper on citizenship, immigration and refugee targeted towards a complete overhaul of the immigration system in South Africa. Our intention is to discuss the entire document in this platform so that uh, we understand what the document entails. Um, in this video though, we are not going to analyze the entire document. We are simply doing an introduction but in the next videos, we will certainly discuss uh, the document, go it, uh, step by step, so that all of us who follow this platform will understand what uh, the citizen, the <coughs> document speaks about. Uh, at the end of the discussion, uh, in discussing the document, we will then give our own analysis. Uh, on what we think uh, with the document as presented by the Minister of Home Affairs. The document is available, I think it's 172 pages. Uh, well, 172 pages is not, is not like a book, because I know that some of you, when uh, it said 172 pages, because uh, <laughs> some of you do not like reading, you then uh, decide not to read. It's important to read the document. I did peruse it overnight uh, and went through it uh, just to have an understanding of what uh, the document says. Um, uh, then uh, now is to study. There's a difference between a reading and a studying. <laughs> now, now we then have to study the document to make notes. So when I was going through the document, I was not making notes. I was simple reading to try and understand what the document says. But the document starts <coughs> by, or the document is mainly based on the <coughs> uh, uh, convention, 1951 convention and 1967 protocol on refugees and Islam seekers. So the document starts by quoting a number of countries in Africa and overseas on their position on the 1951 Convention and the 1967 Protocol on Refugees and Islam Seekers. Uh, the document uh, says that uh, uh, because at the time, 1951-1967 and up to 1993, uh, 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 South Africa was uh, an apartheid state or a colonial state, uh, um, uh, which uh, in the main was uh, uh, the citizenship, for instance, was uh, protecting, was racially based. The citizenship was racially based. The, uh, you will know the creation of homelands. Not everyone was considered a South African. Uh, people were pushed to homelands. Uh, uh, um, <coughs> so uh, the document does analyze that. Uh, and, and of interest, of course, uh, uh, it says that uh, the apartheid regime did not grant refugees uh, status or Islam and refugee status to 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 uh, those that were seeking it. Uh, it only did so to whites, mainly whites from then Rhodesia and later Zimbabwe, that it was granting uh, Islam and the refugee status, who then became citizens of South Africa. So, so you will know <coughs> that uh, a black person from Zimbabwe that would have came to South Africa, say, in 1985, and the white person that came from Zimbabwe same year in 1985 were treated differently uh, because at the time uh, it was a uh, racially based. Thing. So the, this is what the document um, seeks to uh, uh, or is analyzing part of the issues that, that it is analyzing. Uh, um, it then speaks to what is currently happening, which, which uh, South Africa wants to overhaul, because it says towards a complete overhaul of the immigration system in South Africa, uh, to do our way, to, to put into one 
the citizenship, refugees, uh, Islam, and so forth to be uh, under, as if I were to use the term, under one umbrella, not as separate legislations. Uh, but it also speaks about um, the right of uh, migrants, especially refugees and Islam seekers, that uh, they have a right currently to work, to study, and to run business. Uh, so it does a lot of analysis across the globe, as I've already said, on how other countries uh, uh, treat Islam uh, seekers. Uh, whereas in South Africa, uh, there are no what is normally called refugee camps. Uh, uh, people assimilate within uh, the South African population. But uh, what, what is of interest uh, currently uh, maybe many people were not aware of uh, a foreigner who enters South Africa unlawfully uh, uh, or using other unlawful uh, entry points uh, when they get without reporting to the authorities that they are in South Africa, they want to, they are applying for Islam documents. But a person who enters, it doesn't matter how long you've been in South Africa. Uh, once you are arrested, uh, if you show uh, that uh, you or you express an intention to apply for Islam, you will not be arrested. That's what uh, the current uh, 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 law says. If under Refugees Act, if uh, you are a migrant or a foreigner in South Africa, uh, you you are caught you cannot be deported because if you show intention that uh, you want to apply I, rem I remember uh, um, without mentioning names who were in a, in a meeting uh, a, a high profile meeting uh, and this was said to us that uh, <coughs> a guy who was caught uh, without uh, a driving license. This guy had stayed for 10 years in South Africa. So he was caught without a driver's license, was arrested. The issue was on him driving without a license. Then after investigation, only to discover that he's undocumented in South Africa, right? And uh, this guy then says he's in the process of applying for an Islam document. Remember, he stayed for 10 years. Then he says uh, he was uh, applying for an Islam document. So he could not be deported. So the case went to court, and the court says, no, this person uh, is applying for an Islam, uh, notwithstanding the years that uh, the person had spent in South Africa. So the person was not deported. So these are the issues that some of the issues that uh, the Minister of Home Affairs, Dr. Aaron Mitzwalet, was speaking to, to say there must be an overhaul. Uh, so please, let us start uh, the document, it's 172-page document. Uh, at the end, they, they then put the convention itself, 1951 Convention and 1967 Protocol, for us to familiarize ourselves with it, so that when, when we engage, at least uh, we engage from an informed uh, proposition. But uh, we need also to do our own research on how other countries deal with the refugees and the migrants. What I've not yet seen uh, in this white paper on international, in this white paper, uh, immigration and refugee, a white paper on citizenship, immigration and refugee, is the issue of people of low skill from the SATAC region. Remember that uh, the 2017 white paper on um, uh, immigration, uh, white paper on international migration, uh, spoke uh, in detail about the people of low skill because it recognized that um, people of low skill, especially within the SATAC region, they flock to South Africa, find themselves in South Africa, and they made proposals on how to deal with such uh, individuals. But uh, I have not seen in this 
a, a paper but uh, let's uh, uh, study the document we'll uh, be discussing it please write your comments uh, I'm sure you will have it in the government uh, government website Omar Affairs website is there please just google it in the Omar Affairs website and uh, read the document so that when we discuss at least uh, you understand what we are talking about please subscribe like this video if you are on TikTok please do follow us otherwise have a great day goodbye